Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, part two, I'm going to be adding some more resin, but this time it is going to be more of the blues and purples because the first layer, there's a lot of red. I'm also going to be mixing in some clear in throughout the colors as I pour them. Um, I was going to put the stones down first and then do that, but the thin, the layer of resin is super thin right now. And I'm afraid as I build up this piece with more and more layers that they'll get covered and I'll lose a lot of their shine. I'm thinking of attaching these pretty little crystals, just four of them right here on each one of the little lines there. So I definitely do not want these to be covered in resin. So for this layer, we're gonna add some more color in, as I said, and take it from there. So I'm gonna mix up the resin and I will be right back. Okay, so for the gold, I am using Krylon 18 karat my homemade alcohol ink with a little bit of blue diamond uh Lorez blue diamond powder just like a little teensy tenth of a teaspoon worth of mica powder uh then i'm using again the iridescent jade the velvet violet dream and then I'm introducing into this layer some raw ruby which is an ice resin tint plus the clear so I'm ready to go just gonna put my gloves on and what I'm going to do is first put down some clear and then swirl the colors through the clear in random order and then I'm going to try to move it around with my heat gun. And if it's too overbearing, then I will use the blow dryer again. So here's my clear first. I'm going to reserve a little bit in the cup in case I need it after. Make sure that's nothing that shouldn't be there. Always be careful when you're mixing resin. Um, you don't want to pour hardener or spill, even drip hardener or resin on your pouring surface and not clean it thoroughly. Because it'll create a problem with your piece in the end. And so my purpose of putting the clear down first is to hopefully have some of this background show through. It was just too much red in that first layer. So the first one I'm going to pour will be the Stream Alcohol Ink. Just giving them another quick mix. I'm kind of just, as you could see, just plopping it around in certain areas. Then next up will be my homemade alcohol ink. With the blue diamond end mixed in. These are all transparent, by the way. Mm 
Then I'm going to do the iridescent jade. This one is a little more uh, opaque, but it's not full blown. So semi-transparent. Oh, also I mixed up a little bit of glitter that I'm going to be putting in certain areas. Almost forgot to mention the glitter. And that glitter, I'll show you in a second. It's just like a white iridescent glitter. This is the glitter I'm using. Iridescent Unicorn, it's called. And I got this at Michael's, I believe. Michael's or Hobby Lobby. One of the two. The next color is going to be the Velvet Violet. I don't want too much of this. So I'm going to try to just put it in a few random areas where there is none. Then I'm going to do Nope, I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to do the gold next and then the red I'm going to put on top of the gold to get that nice beautiful I can't even explain the color it makes it's almost like a fiery copper. So here's the gold. Before I go on, I want to put a little purple in the body. I forgot. Sorry, guys. Okay, so now those lines I'm going to cover with the red and then I'm going to come back and put some gold by itself. Even when it goes under the green, it's just 
fantastic effects. I think my next piece I'm going to try doing um, like a base of this gold and then different alcohol inks on top or even like Bombay inks that can be transparent. Something transparent on top and just see what kind of effects I get. I think that would look really cool. And then I have, I put some in the body, some gold in the body. I keep forgetting about the body as if it doesn't matter. I guess though, when you look at a butterfly, it's the wing you look at mainly. And now just some of the red by itself here and there, just to use it up. And I have a little bit of uh, gold left. So with that, I'm going to go over some of these green, big green areas. Should be good to go. Time to heat her up. I do have a little more purple left and a little bit of clear left. So let me blow this around first. Okay, now I'm going to get my blow dryer because it's a very thin layer, so it's hard to move it.
Wow, guys, this is turning out really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. All right, so now what I want to do is I have a little bit of clear here, okay? What I'm going to do is I know my rocks are going to come out this way. So I want to do something in this area with the clear. So I'm going to pour some circles of different sizes. And I'm going to assess to see what they look like, if they need anything added to them. A lot of times when you do this, you can let the resin underneath do your decorating for you, if that makes sense. Like underneath this clear, and I will show you a close up when I'm done, you see all these different layers of pretty colors. So sometimes this is doing just this is enough. There we go. So I'm just looking around. Let's see here. We have one there. You can't see it too good though. one actually I'm gonna stop right there with that little drip Let's see if we could do some little drips I'm going to leave that alone. So now I have some glitter. It's not thick enough yet. Let me take my gloves off. They, it has to be so thick that it plops off of the stick or else it's going to spread out into the piece and not stay in a nice firm line. So what you want to do is just gradually add more and more 
until you get to the right consistency. Which I will show you here. It's either that or you wait a while for it to really thicken up. See how it's plopping off of the stick? That's good. That's what you want. So, I'm thinking just having a little bit of glitter coming out of the edges, outer edge of the wing. So, right here. A little bit. I didn't grab enough. Need to grab a little more than that. I'm just going to kind of let it plop where it wants to plop. I'm going to put a big area over here. Just going to cover these up a little bit more. So it's still going to spread out a little, but it's not going to flow out. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. <laughs> Ooh, just splash glitter everywhere.
when it's thick like this, you have to be very patient. It's usually not this hard to get off. It's just that the resin's getting hot too. So, you know, things are starting to act up. All right, everybody. I think that's it for this layer. Going to let it dry. A couple of people have asked to me, by the way, um, how long in between layers you can wait or you have to wait, I mean. And for me, as soon as this is firm, I'm going to start my next layer. Um, obviously, you can't do any kind of marker work or anything like that, but if it's just as simple as pouring some more sections, um, this now this is specific for geodes or freeform designs like this. A regular painting, if you want to do another layer on it, you have to wait at least, you know, till it's cured the next day. But for geodes and stuff, you can start on the next layer as long as when you pour this new pigment down on the, the work surface, it's not going to sink through the layer that's already there. So usually about four to six hours, you're able to do that. So if I want to do another layer on this right here, I'll come back in about probably six hours and start the next one. Now for me, my next step is most likely going to be putting stones on. So I'll most likely wait for this to cure because if I put them down and they fall somewhere that they shouldn't fall, then I'm going to have a hard time getting them off of the tacky resin and it's going to leave marks. So for that, I'm going to have to wait. But as far as like doing something like this, if I wanted to do another layer of this here with no stones, no markers, wait about six hours, it'll be very sticky, but it's still fine to pour on. And obviously you don't have to sand because it's still tacky. So that's it. Let me torch this really quick. And then I'll take you in for a close up. Now you can't really see the, the clear circles I poured really good right now, but once it cures and all that, you'll see them. Gives a lot of depth and interest to the piece when you do something like that. Well, let me just fix this little bit of glitter here that's missing also. I just want it to be a solid patch of glitter. Okay. Now we're good. Also, as far as air bubbles and all that, you should keep torching it every few minutes for like the first 15 minutes, just to make sure you get all of them. Then again, sometimes it doesn't even matter, like for something like this, if there's an air bubble in it, it's getting covered with another uh, layer. So, sometimes it's okay to be a little lazy on that part, so you're really not going to see them. Unless you're covering it with a, a layer of clear, then you want to take care of those. Okay, I'm almost going to lose you, so I'm going to go over this quick. I'm running out of recording time, and I don't want to start another video for five seconds. There are the circles that I poured. You can see some of them. There's another one right there. body and the whole thing so I will catch you guys in the next video happy pouring